Hey everyone, this is Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church. Welcome to another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Hope everyone is doing well, and as I always say, most of all, that you are saved walking in the will of God. Amen. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> if I can get it here, we have another beautiful sunny day. Amen. And uh, holding on to it, <laughs> you know, very preciously. I think we're getting ready to enter into a few days of uh, rain and... Uh, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll miss, I'll, I'm going to miss my sunny days, you know, but I got to have the rain too, right? Amen. Or things to grow and everything like that. But uh, hopefully, you know, uh, well, I know, you know, <laughs> being the Lord's will, you know, if I'm still around to see it and everything like that, uh, <laughs> which any of us can go at any time, right? Being the Lord's will, we're, we'll stay here, as we said, until he's ready for us. Amen. But uh, spring's coming, so, uh, you know, there'll be plenty of days of sun and, of course, rain, because, like I said, you know, it's how natural order of things, right? It's how God uh, set things in order and set things in motion, so. But we thank the Lord for each and every day, amen. And uh, as we always say, the Bible says, it's the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it, amen. So that's what we're to do, amen. And uh, we're to do that and be faithful in doing that, amen. Uh, no, we don't curse the day. Wake up and say, "Oh, this uh, woke up again and this, you know, this mess." <laughs> but, but some people I know have actually think that way, have that thought. But well, here I am, you know, in this mess. I, well, uh, you know, you could be worse shape. Uh, but you know, I hear people say, "Let's let's 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 take that back." Just I hear people say that. Say well, I'm 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 upright and mobile. You know, I'm still breathing. Well, yeah, that's true. But you know, if you're saved, and you know, if you leave this world, how much, so much better you'll be <laughs> in heaven, Amen. You know, if your eternity, if you're sealed, Amen, and you are going to make heaven your home after you leave this side of eternity, you're just. You're just gaining, amen. You you're leaving this veil of tears behind, amen. And you're gaining eternal life, amen. You're going to be with the Lord Jesus and all the saints that have went on before, amen. And hallelujah. But I, I get what people say when they say that, amen. They're saying, "Hey, I'm upright and mobile." You know, it could, could could be worse, you know. And actually, that's true. You know, you could could be a lot worse. Could be, we say, in the hospital, and could be. You know, during sickness and everything like that. And we know a lot of people sick, and as we say that, let's continue to remember the sick and afflicted. And uh, but we'd like to say also, most of all, the uh, backslidden and the unsaved. Amen. Uh, pray for them that they come back to the Lord and come to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Cause see, you can leave this world through sickness or in a sick state. But be saved, and you can make heaven your home, amen. But if you're sick and you leave this world in unsaved condition, that's it, amen. You had your shot. You had your opportunity, amen. And if you didn't accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior before you left this world, as a tree falls, so shall it lie, amen, as the Word of God tells us, amen. This is the proving ground. This is the trying ground. This is the opportunity that we have, amen. So, the Lord's calling you, please don't turn him away, amen. He's pricking your heart, amen, trying to lead you to an altar of repentance, amen. And we all, even, even you and I, we are Christians, true Christians, amen. We will lead and we will believe in a humble, repentant 
life. Amen. Who is it? Me and my wife, I guess we're talking this day won't be these super, you know, super spiritual Christians that nothing will affect us, you know, and uh, you know no, it's good to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, amen, and against the enemy and against this world, amen. That's true, amen. But, and it's not putting on a false face and, a, you know, a, a fake facade or anything like that. But we're still human. We are still prone to make mistakes. So we have to come before the Father sometimes and ask forgiveness, amen. That's being real. That's being true, amen. Because, you know, sometimes it's flesh. Sometimes our minds, sometimes we'll let things come in. And we have to ask forgiveness. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. That's what grace and mercy that the Lord Jesus supplied. Along with the salvation. Amen. He said, and if, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Christ Jesus, amen. It's not that we don't want, it's not that we want to sin. I don't want to sin. I don't want to go back to the things, amen, because there's nothing back there for me, amen. There's nothing in this world for me, amen. <laughs> Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, amen. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus, amen. New creations, amen. We're to serve God, amen, in the beauty of holiness, amen. It's the spirit inside of us that's perfect, amen, and it, it will come out amen it will clean out all the junk and refuse and everything like that and we'll serve the Lord amen that way and each and every day trying to draw closer in in that manner of perfection toward him amen trying to through his word and prayer and sanctification amen drawing closer to him amen that's what we should desire each and every day in our walk with the Lord amen as I said, if you make a mistake, bow before the Lord. Lead a humble, repentant life. Amen. Be willing. Don't be stubborn before the Lord. God don't like a stubborn look. Amen. Or a proud look. Amen. He wants us to be humble before Him. Amen. Be truthful before Him. So be willing to bow before Him. There's no shame. There's no shame to ask for forgiveness. Just leave it at the altar, amen. Get up, leave it there, brush yourself off, and walk. Walk for the Lord, amen. The shame is if you stay in that position and don't ask for forgiveness, amen. Or the shame is to stay down in it, never. No, friend, don't. The Lord has supplied a way for us grace and mercy. Now that does not once that does not in any shape, form, or fashion or what I'm saying does not give. <laughs> As they we used to pop I haven't heard that haven't heard this phrase said in a long time, but that does not give you at any point, time or place, no way, no how, nothing, a license to go about in sin. The Bible tells us, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No, God forbid, it says. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to live any longer therein. We're not. That's what I said. There's this world. Nothing. <laughs> Holds nothing for us now. Amen. We're new creatures in Christ. We're the peculiar people. Amen. We're just walking. Well, we're in a pilgrimage. Amen. We're passing through here. Amen. We're looking for a land to come. A city to come. Amen. Looking for a city. One of those good old songs in the red back hymnal. Amen. We love, we love those songs in the red back end. Oh, amen. Good stuff. So, we thank the Lord. Amen. That he wrought salvation. Amen. The Lord Jesus. He was our substitution. He was the propitiation, the Bible tells us, for our sins. It says he was the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of, for the whole world. Amen. All that will call upon his name. Amen. But, oh, Lord, help us see more and more these days. Amen. Even in the churches, amen, that don't call upon the Lord Jesus. Amen. They don't believe in the blood, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They'll do and say and sing about everything else except about the shed blood of Christ and the repentance from sin and taking all the altars out 
of the house of God, amen, and we'll sing and have a big show and have a feel-good message and you'll leave all pumped up feeling good and saying, oh, that was a wonderful service, amen, but where was the condemnation for sins and transgressions and altar call that you must be born again, amen? Slowly, all that's being taken out of this modern movement, amen? Lord, help us. Believe in the old time, the old way of serving God and the old message of the Word of God that ye must be born again, amen? And out of this world, amen? Just be strangers to this world after that. You get saved and know you're no longer a part of this world. Oh yeah, we got to be in this world, but we don't have to take part the junk and the sins of this world amen and you will stand out and that is part of it said I heard said the other day did a video a while back about it the world hated Jesus amen he said I was going to hate him tomorrow will not they hate you because they hated him before and that's fine devil already hates you and I if you're a Christian. If you're doing damage to his kingdom, amen, he's tempting you, he's fighting against you, turning people against you, amen, that's fine. What? What? Hey, you living for the Lord, amen? People aren't going to like it. If you're living that good old timey, amen, gospel walk, amen, according to the word of God, amen, this day, especially in this day of age, people don't like it. Branded a fanatic. People, even of your own household, even of your own friends, they're not going to like it. They'll want to separate. Amen. Just as they did with the Lord Jesus. At one point, many left him. Yes, even his disciples, he said, will thou also leave him? Who was it? I don't know if it was exactly, if it wasn't Peter or something. He said, where, where are we going to go? Thou, thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. And he still does. Amen. So where are we going to go? There's nowhere else to go except to stay with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Because he has the words of eternal life. He is eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank the Lord for it, that he was willing to offer himself up a sacrifice for you and I. We may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Oh, glory. So we have to stand up for Christ. No matter what it costs us. Amen. Because the reward is going to be so much greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Than what we have in this world. We may have great many things in this world. Amen. We may have riches. They have all this other stuff, amen. But if we gain this world and lose our soul, in the end, what do we give in exchange for our soul, amen? It's either one of two places, let's say many, many times when you were born, you started your eternal existence because you're going to be destined for one of two places, amen? You're either going to make heaven your home or it's going to be hell. You're going to see the new heavens, the new earth, and your glorified body, amen, or you're going to be in a still, eternal, spiritual body. Brother Kenny preached last night at the church. But you'll be in hell, amen, but you will never burn up. Fire is never quenched, amen. Ooh. Watched a video. It's just one of those many little examples that kind of sticks in your brain. Watched a, uh, a smelting factory. It had one of these big things on a crane and it was full of uh, melted uh, metal, you know, and it was, it was just, you know, just hot, glowing hot and it was ready to pour. Well, something happened on the crane or something like that and they pulled it over and instead of pouring where it should, it poured out onto the floor and just went all over and it was so bright and so hot 
the camera looking down it, it it blinded almost the camera and the entire floor was covered with it and it was just glowing and popping and everything like that and I was thinking my goodness what a picture thinking about, about about being immersed in something like that but yet you're not going to burn up amen you're going to be in something like that and the pain and the severity of that but you're not going to die and, and it's going to be eternal but see that's another thing another doctrine that they're preaching that you're going to be in that that you're just going to burn up you're going to spend a while in there and learn your lesson amen but then you'll just burn up and it'll be like you never existed hogwash false doctrine don't listen to that Lord help us that's just to huh, that's just to give you a false sense of security if I don't make it then it's okay just, I'll just go there and I'll suffer for a little while that's, that's, they're take, taking a page out of the whole purgatory thing I'll just suffer for a little while until my sins are, 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 are burnt out of me and people will pray me out and into heaven or something like that that's just an extension of that. If I just go to hell and I, I don't make heaven my home, I'll just go to hell and suffer for a little while for my sins uh, to, <laughs> to prove what kind of point. It doesn't matter. What they're teaching is you'll just burn up and, and you'll just go into non-existence. It'll be like you never existed. But that doctrine's being preached right now in our churches, in, our, in some of these lighter churches, in some of these Pentecostal churches, in some of these new churches I'm beginning to, I'm, I'm getting to the point I'm gonna start calling them new age churches because their teachings and some of them are a lot new age churches new age beliefs God help us not biblical so brother you're being severe off them I, when I find false doctrine I'm going to call it out now a lot of times I'm not going to use I'm not going to use names I don't want to call out names it's not for me to sit there and you know do that unless the Lord tell me to do something like that but no I'm, I, I, but, but when I come across false doctrine <laughs> man watch them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yank that false doctrine up by its ears and I'm going to call it out say here it is this is what's being preached look out for it don't listen to it it's false it's fake here's in the word right here in, in the word of God that's what it talks about Whew, Lord help us but we're talks we're told Lord told us he said in the latter days false prophets false teachers we're going to bring in damnable doctrines brought on by seducing spirits that right there is one example of a damnable doctrine amen that was brought in by a bunch of other stuff that was brought in by a seducing spirit easily that's easily heaping tick the teachers having itching ears, amen, telling people what they want to hear, amen. Easily getting seduced from the pulpit, amen. The enemy has gotten behind the pulpit in many, amen. Get easily seduced and seduce the rest, amen, to believe this false doctrine, to get them to be at ease in Zion, amen. Go oh. We can't allow that to happen to us, amen. Friends, church, people out there still serving God on the word of God, hallelujah, amen. We can't allow it. We got to, amen, First Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, amen. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, amen. Heard up the loins of your mind. Amen. The helmet of salvation. Amen. The whole armor of God. Hold up that shield. Quench those fiery darts. Amen. But gird up the loins of your mind. Strengthen your mind. Put it in the word of God. Know, amen, when you hear and see these false doctrines, not to be seduced by these things. Amen. You'll know, amen, because why? Because you'll know the word of God. You've been in it. You'll see it. These things won't take you unaware. Amen. Hallelujah. To be in the Word of God, we should know the Word of God. 
You'll know it doesn't sound right. We use KJV. We use the King James Bible. We believe that is the word of God given to the English speaking people. Amen. It's God's plan. And when somebody's reading from a different version, you know it's off. Because you study the word of God and somebody's reading and you're like, whoa, that doesn't sound, that doesn't jive. You know it's off, amen. And for a person preaching a false doctrine, you know it sounds off. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, that ain't right. It's not what the word of God says. Burn the loins of your mind. Strengthen your mind, amen. To get yourself away, the enemy can't bind the strong man. Amen. He's got that. He can go down and he can get into the heart. Amen. And put many things in there. And take root in there. Amen. If he gets in there, man, he's one. He's got a hold of you. You can believe a lie and be damned. The word of God says it. Oh no, I'm saved. I don't no, I, I don't believe that. I, 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 can, I can believe all this and everything, but in the end, I'm still going to be. Don't go there. Irresistible grace. Not taught anywhere in the Bible. What's it talk about that? Next verse. Listen to this and think about this. Verse 14, as obedient children will be, to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Know the word of God. Follow the word of God. What's it talk about? The, what, what, what about the laws? The laws of the land. What it normally say? It says ignorance is no excuse to the law. We're not to be ignorant of the word of God. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. To be ignorant to the Word of God. We are to know the Word of God and know how to act, know how to live, <laughs> know what we're listening to, know who we're listening to. Amen. His sheep, your sheep, we know the Lord's voice. Amen. And a stranger will not follow. Amen. We're to walk a different walk. We're not to listen to the, the Pied Piper. Amen. The enemy is like the Pied Piper going along with sing or whistling on that on the, the flute, amen. With everybody falling. That's the way the world's going, amen. The enemy's like the Pied Piper. He's playing on that tune to a different tune, amen. To the tune of the world, amen, of fleshly things and the things of the enemy and the lies of the enemy, amen. And and the thing is, too many of the churches and the and the people that used to serve God are going in that direction these days, amen. Believing there's many ways that we can get to heaven, amen. No, for no, 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 no friend, no, one way to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Sounds good, don't it, though? <laughs> Sounds all nice and cushy and all. We can just all gather hands and, you know, just sing together, kumbaya, and just pat each other on the back. No, I'm saying we can't be friendly with others. No. no. But when it comes down to it, it comes down to where the red, I like to say, <laughs> the old saying, where the rubber meets the road. No, we we'll to take a stand. We got to take a stand, amen, say, no, sorry. Word of God, the Holy Bible, that's it. Jesus is the way. That's it, period. No compromise. That's it, standing on the Word of God. Why do you think that Christianity is being attacked so hard? When every other one, other religion getting a pass. It's okay if they do that. Okay if they believe that. Now they're trying to pass this bill, this equality bill, and push it through so that anything that's spoken against these sodomites, if you speak through it, it's going to 
be considered any it's going to be considered hate speech basically and it's going to be they're saying it's going to be for any religion well right now many of these other religions pretty much accept the practice there's a couple of course, of course it's Christian but a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, denominations in Christendom have started to accept that amen we'll see how all that unfolds in verse 15 it says but as he which hath called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation Lord help me Now sometimes I'll get with a friend, you know, somebody at church or friend or something like that, and we'll cut up and joke around and play funny. Now we don't get, you know, we don't tell dirty jokes or curse or anything like that, but, you know, we got to watch. we got to watch ourselves. I won't, because, because we're going to give an account of everything we've said and done in this body while we're down there, the judgment seat of Christ, Amen. Because it, verse 16, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. He doubles it up right there. He wants it to be known. He wants it to be set in stone right there. Written. Holy. So, well, Jesus is holy for me, so I don't have to worry about that. Eh, wrong answer. <laughs> we have to accept that and be that way. Well, I can't be that way. People talk about, I can't be that way. I can't, there's no way. Not in this flesh. I can't do it. Because you don't want to. A person makes excuses for that that he doesn't want to do. If you want to do something and you desire it with your whole heart, what I found out in my tenure down here is you will make a way to do it if you really want to do it. Ooh. You really want to serve God? If you really, honestly, believe you are saved in the hand of God, salvation is truly yours, and you want to serve the God in the beauty of holiness according to the Word of God, then you will follow it to the best that you know how, according to your wisdom and knowledge. And the more you learn, the more that you will want to mark up to the Word of God. The more you want to follow it, and live it and the more you'll desire it now if you don't desire it there's no effort you won't make an effort now I'm not down on anybody I'm just saying you want to make an effort we want to make our father in heaven proud can I say I'm perfect oh, I, I wish I could say I was perfect but if we all said we were perfect and we were and we and we were perfect, then the Lord Jesus wouldn't have needed to come and die for you and I. But we're once again we try to strive each and every day that we might achieve another level with our walk with the Lord. Yes, he's long suffering and merciful to us amen and it, once again the spirit inside of us is perfect amen and it continues to work amen work with us in this flesh amen that we might draw closer to him amen i know we'll never reach 100 percent perfection in this flesh down here amen because this is sinful flesh and it's going back to the dust amen now, i'm not saying sinful flesh that we're still continuing in sin that's not what i meant just saying that this will be changed, amen, the moment in the twinkling of an eye, or this will be laid down, and will we get a glorified body, amen? Verse 17, If you call on the Father who without respect a person judgeth, and we will be judged, according to what every man's work, we're going to have works. Where God says we are now, we are 
Not of works of salvation, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we will have works. I say it a lot. And you guys know this. Word of God tells us we're going to have works. We want to have good works. We can't help but have good works after we're saved. Amen. Things we do for the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm not just saying go into the house of God. That's just part. That's just a small part. Be workers. Amen. Out in this world. Amen. Do whatever the Lord calls you to do. Amen. First and foremost, be witnesses for Christ. Amen. But it said, according to every man who past the time of your sojourning or your time down here, your time living here and doing stuff down here, it's a sojourning here in fear. Your time you're here in, 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 in fear and in your respect and, and for, uh, for God and your uh, people say, oh, no, that means fear that he could strike you down. Well, <laughs> he is God. You think he could strike people down? He has in the Bible. It was an Ananias and Sapphire, lied to the Holy Ghost, kept back part of their promise to the church they had given over, and the Holy Ghost. They lied to the Holy Ghost and they, they paid for it with their life. But we have to have a fearful respect and adoration and worship of God. Amen. Do I fear Him? <laughs> As an almighty God that created like... <laughs> and people to stop at sometimes creation. You know, I go back. Let's go back a little bit. All reality, and that still boggles the mind when you think about it, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> but we still have a loving fear of our God. Amen. Peter knew what he was talking about. Peter knew what he was talking about. You got to remember, he walked. <laughs> he walked with the Lord. Amen. He was one. He was one of the uh, twelve. Amen. He was one. He was He was up on the Mount Transfiguration. Heard the voice of God. Amen. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Woo! Have you heard the voice of God? <laughs> I, I, I have it not audibly <laughs> once again that would be pretty cool uh, but I've heard it in my heart amen felt it it's a feeling you can't describe amen but it's a leadership it's a guidance amen but we are to have a loving serving fear of him amen we are servants but he does say and I say this a lot because it's so wonderful. No longer calls us servants, but calls us friends. Amen. But yet we do. We serve him. Amen. Because it's so wonderful to call him our father in heaven. Amen. But he is our master. He's our king. Amen. We are to serve him. We are to carry that banner high. Amen. Just like in the times of old when the, the kings went out. Amen. And the king's messengers, they carried a flag, a banner. Amen. To let people know who, who that they were serving. Amen. We hold that banner high. Amen. Proudly. To be ashamed. Amen. We're not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. First John 2 and 3. Hereby will we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Amen. So there's some <laughs> evidence right there. That we look for. Now I'm not, 
heard, heard this said before. I haven't heard it said in a while. Uh, but sticks, one of those little, the little saying that sticks in your mind. Now, I'm not the fruit inspector. Now, it does say, you know, judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. But I'm one there too to let one's fruit speak for itself. And you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Now I have enough that I have to answer for for myself at judgment. Amen. Now if the Lord tell me you go to that person tell them saying, brother this, this is wrong. This is in the word of God and you said this whatever the case may be you're to go to that person the Bible tells us we're to do that not because we hate that person not because but they're teaching something that's not right not according to the word of God you're to go now this is something that took me several years really to get in and really fully get in and understand to the point that I that I would actually do it because I know that you have a duty that you have a duty to do that to stand upon the word of God if you know it to be wrong so we have to keep the commandments of God Especially as ministers, as teachers of the Word of God, even just we have to, to witness the Word of God, we have to stand on the Word of God. Amen. To preach it, to teach it without fear, without favor. I've been saying that a lot here lately. And keep the Word of God and be pure with it. Amen. Not leaning, not and not changing doctrine. Amen. That's been part of church doctrine for. Uh, well, up to, up to, like I said, I guess in the video, the day, up all the way to the 19th century, into the 20th century, where it started changing. I said, and I'll say it, and I'll continue to say it without apology, amen. We change to fit the Word of God. We don't change the Word of God to fit us. The Word of God stands, and it will stand when the world is on fire. Verse John 2 and 6, He that saith, He abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. Love the world anymore. We are not to love the world anymore. We are to love the people love the sinners not the sin witness to the sinners witness to the sin I draw, I draw that out witness to the sinners amen love them consider yourself hate the sin stand against preach against the sin teach against the sin talk against the sin witness against it let the Lord be your guide. Open your mouth. The Lord will fill it through His Spirit. Never argue. Use wisdom. Never argue. The argument goes nowhere. But I address this part to, especially to the preachers and the teachers. You and I, preachers, teachers, evangelists, pastors, stand on the word of God. Do not change it. Amen. Do not give in to the popular opinions. Well, we should let this slide so we start being inclusive. No. We oh we should change this so we can include this. No. We should do this to include No. Do not change it and if if you're in doubt about a doctrine, go back, 
and study it and look at what for instance everything if you trust what the original church fathers taught and church doctrine upon what they preached all the way up as I said all the way to the 19th century up into the 20th century is where it started changing because why because we started changing it to fit what we wanted Amen. We just give you, for instance, I can look at biblical commentary from these pastors and these church scholars back into the 18th, uh, or well, yeah, the 18th or 19th century, excuse me. Well, 17th, 19th century. Maybe a little bit after that. And look what they say about certain scriptures. And they don't budge an inch. They tell you exactly what has been preached and taught all the way back. Even even further back that church and what scholars taught. Back to what the ancient church fathers believed and taught. But then you get farther on After that, especially once you get start getting into the 20th centuries, and guess what I find? I find the people teaching. I find the commentaries changing to where, oh, uh, well, it actually means this. And what is it? It is a watered-down doctrine, and stuff is changed, and it, 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 it's, it's starting to get easier. Stuff is changing. Oh, well, they really meant this. and that, uh, Why do you say they really meant this? Nothing's changed. The Word of God didn't change. Well, I looked in the Hebrew and Greek. So did they. Well, why did that change? Well, I looked in the dictionary and everything. Well, that's one of your problems because wording and stuff and definitions has changed. Why don't you look at the dictionaries from, say, oh, the 16th, 17th, 18th century and far. You're looking at modern dictionaries which have changed wording. I don't like a lot of this modern teaching. Because a lot of it's not biblical. It probably you, you're bringing an indictment a lot of, against a lot of people. I'm not mentioning anybody's uh, name, but I, I see a lot on YouTube teaching. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good teaching out there, a lot of good preaching. I'm, not, I'm just saying, I'm coming against the false teachings. Coming against... The, the things that, that man has changed, amen, that we've been warned about, amen, this last day. People seem to get, forget, especially when they're changing these things, we were warned about them, that false teachers and false uh, prophets would come and start changing the word, amen. And that people would want ministers, you know, teachers having itching ears, teachers and ministers to come in and teach them a lesser more friendly doctrine so that they wouldn't be condemned into what they're doing. Amen. And what are we seeing now? We are seeing it come to pass right before our very eyes. Lord help us. So that's why I'm, it's so important we go back if we need to once again to the very core tear down and rebuild right back up again on the word of God the very center right down the middle Christ him crucified start it right over and build it back up Christ being the chief cornerstone on the commandments and the teachings of Christ amen of course, the Old Testament being the the schoolmaster leading us up to Christ, Amen. Building on that rock, Amen. Being Christ, the chief cornerstone. If you build on that, the church will not fall. As you 
build and build and build and build and false doctrine and it just goes everywhere and that's what we're seeing we're in those days just more and more and more we're seeing it. <laughs> more and more of the word of God being fulfilled just as the Lord Jesus said was going to happen and all these other uh, the apostles told us that it was going to happen false teachings, false prophets word of God letting things slip as the word of God tells us so where do you and I stand? are we going to stand on the word of God? without fear, without favor? not worrying about what the world thinks not worrying about what church members thinks are we going to stand because I got to stand and you got to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and I want, I want my hands and my conscience clear Amen I'll leave that to you that right there think on these things <laughs> see law as he said in some of the songs so, but if you need a salvation, and the Lord's calling you to an altar of repentance. Don't turn him away. Come back to him before it's everlasting too late. Come to him before it's everlasting too late. Amen. He's calling you. He died for you. He loves you. It's not his will any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. That confession is made unto salvation. If you come to him, confess your sins, amen, before him and to him. Ask him to save you, amen. And I can't tell you what I ought to say to him, amen. You just pour your heart out to him, but confess your sin to him, ask him to save you. He will come as your heart, take up a bow there, and he'll save you, amen. Make a public declaration, tell people the Lord has saved you, amen. You'll be on your way to heaven. Amen. You'll want to share the gospel with others. Amen. Praise the Lord. You'll want to get in the Bible. Amen. Study. Study the Word of God. And you too stand on it. Be unmovable. And walk daily with the Lord. Amen. In prayer. We all could study the word be in the word and stay in prayer more and more amen amen but that's the word of the lord for today amen and here comes the sun Ooh, just in time but we appreciate you praise god god bless each and every one of you blessings of christ jesus on each and every one of you continue to pray for the sick and afflicted as we said most of all the backslidden and the unsaved that they come to the Lord, come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. And uh, not, that I'm, not that I'm lessening the sick and afflicted, amen. There's a lot of people out there that are truly sick and desire your prayer, so pray for them, amen. I'm not lessening that, but, you know, as I said, salvation is very important because you, you can leave this world sick and be saved and go into glory, amen. But, and pray for your churches, pray for one another, lift one another up in prayer, exhort one another, and uh, let's all strive and work for the kingdom of God and try to gain as many as we can amen to witness and uh, you know that way the spirit of God can deal with them it'll be you know plant a seed or be the one to water it amen whatever it is Lord uh, just be led with the spirit of God amen amen so I think there's any announcements amen but you know come visit us at the Word of Life Church all of the hours and everything is at the uh, beginning of the video so take a look there and uh, take a look at the description box uh, at the, on the video part and uh, just take a look at those links and read through those uh, very important information there and uh, I believe that's it but uh, everyone take care and uh, this was Tim associate pastor with the Word of Life Church and this was another edition of the Church of Video <laughs> Word of Life Church We've still got scripture going through my head Word of Life Church video ministries and uh, so you guys take care and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Amen. Amen. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.